uh, time at lengths. Got it. All right, we're live. We're live. Sorry, I was late. I am 13 minutes late. I got this feeling like, can I turn my camera? Will it work with me? It's telling me I must rotate. Will it take it that way? No, it won't. Hi, is anybody here? Well, hello, Jamie. Hey girl, how are you? Does this picture look okay? You can be my camera person from afar. <laughs> and I love you so much and you know it. Fletch is here, Tech 715 is here. Christina, hi love. I love this. It's been a while since I've been here, blurry cunt. What's up? Well framed, okay. Thank you, Tech 715, I appreciate that. I love that. I love being called a young lady. Hi guys, thank you, Jamie. Hey, WWE Motors. I love this. I love this, I love this. Hi guys, It's uh, it's been a while, huh? Yeah, it has been. Um, you know, uh, lots of reasons. Here, let me, I'm just gonna move something closer to me. Oh, there it goes. I'm such a non-professional when it comes to all of these things. Hi, Josie. Hi, sweetheart. I've seen lots of pictures of you. Um, oh gosh, okay, I, I love it. Hello, Furcha from Argentina. I gotta say, man, that is one of the things I really, really love about, you know, because there's so many things not to love about social media and I'm clearly not the greatest at social media but uh, I do love that we get this chance to connect with each other from all over the world I mean it just it's just one of the coolest things it was like that first time you get on Facebook and you're like wow I can connect to kids that I went to elementary school with um, but anyway, I love it. Where's everybody from? Where are you from? There's a bunch of people here. I love it. I love it. I love it. North Carolina. I love North Carolina. We please do more live videos on my YouTube channel. I am working on that. I would like to do that. Oklahoma's in the house. Connecticut's in the house. Illinois is in the house. Oh, waving back. Texas. Barry from the UK. I love this. Michigan, Yorkshire, England, Upper Michigan, <gasps> Kuwait. Kuwait is in the house. Atlanta, Utah in the house. Well, that's a beautiful state. Ohio. Hey, AJ, you made it. Um, this is super cool. I am, I am excited to be here. You know, you got Sweden's in the house. Expensive ass California. I feel you. I mean, that was part of why I left California. I left for a lot of reasons. A lot is because I really wanted to change my lifestyle. I wanted to change how I was living. Texas is in the house. Um, and I wanted to um, be out in the woods. And to do that in Los Angeles is just so prohibitively expensive. It's crazy. Michigan's in the house. Um, and uh, and I'd fallen in love with Nashville when I did the show Nashville. I know there's probably a bunch of people who um, have joined who are Halloween Town fans who have never been here for a Wake Up Wednesday. Um, I think I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, I, I so you guys know that I am out there doing comic cons more and more. And um, I love meeting you more than I can say. I am just loving hearing your stories and connecting with you. And um, one of the things that I've been hearing more and more is how much you love the Wake Up Wednesdays and how much they mean to you. And for those of you who are just here for the first time, Wake Up Wednesday was something that came out of the pandemic. And it was a way for us to connect. 
And so many people were stuck at home, obviously, and so many people were kind of waking up to things that maybe they hadn't ever seen before, or they were waking up to the fact that they were not loving the life that they had been living, and now that they had a little break from it, they were going, I don't want that life anymore, but now what? Um, you know, there's just been so much change on the planet everywhere, you know, some of it is absolutely horrifying and horrific. Some of it is beautiful. I like to use this space as a place where A, we can honestly share and be real with each other. But I also wanna, and I have tried and will continue to keep it a very positive place because there are so many spaces in the world that are really upset and angry and there's a lot of fighting and I just wanted to create a space with like-minded people who wanted to foster positivity and creativity and um, freedom of expression to be the artist or the creator that you wanna be even if you don't have in your estimation a creative bone in your body. So that's what, um, um, oh my gosh. You guys, I love going back and reading these. Although the last time I couldn't go back and read, I don't know, I, because I take these long breaks, um, I miss, I think there's things that have changed in YouTube. There's things, ways to tool around that I, that are lost on me. You have to, and my chair is very squeaky. Um, you have to understand, I'm an analog girl. I, I, I really do try to get my tech hat on. I have my dear friend, Aaron Holznagel, who helps me and he's helping me with my website so we have more ways to connect. And um, I'm thinking about special things to do with just people who want to um, have something outside of a public space. So um, we're working on that. I'm working on some merch because I see you guys are the most amazing stuff when you show up in shows. And I've got some ideas for things that I would like to do and put out into the world. Um, and, um, and it's like uh, finding my space in all of it. Um, but one of the things that has happened recently is that you know, I love you guys so much. And I love my, you know, I have fans from sort of many camps, but predominantly there's the two camps. There's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle camp and there is the Halloween Town camp. And Halloween Town is on right now. And it was so much fun. Just I was with just with Kimberly J. Brown and Daniel Koontz in Richmond, um, Virginia over the weekend. We had so much fun. And she's heading off to um, St. Helens, Oregon, and she's gonna be seeing um, J. Paul Zimmerman, Zimmerman and Philip Van Dyke and Emily Roski, and so that's gonna be cool for all of them. Um, and then coming up for me, I'm gonna be in Rhode Island at the Rhode Island Comic Con, which is, I believe, the fourth, third, fourth, and fifth, is that right? Of November. I'll have those dates. I'll post those dates below. I'll get it straight. I'm still a little jet lagged. It took a long time to get home from the airport or to just get home. I spent the night. I spent Sunday night in the airport. That was super fun. Anyway, I just, you know, people come up to me at Comic Cons and tell me things that they've heard that I've said that are not true. And mostly I just, you know, one-on-one -on -one kind of tell them, no, I never said that. No, I didn't really feel that way. And I had something come across my radar um, from somebody who kind of was speaking for me or speaking as if they knew me or that, they knew what my mind was. My suspicion is, is that it's somebody who is very remotely connected to the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. Maybe. Maybe a family member, maybe a friend of, 
uh, but obviously decades later because that was 33 years ago. One of the things, so I thought, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot. Part of me is like, why, who cares? And really there is sincerely a part of me that's like, who cares? I don't really, you know, life is too short. There's too many really important things going on in the world. But there were some things that I thought, you know, like, let's just set the record straight. First and foremost, the first thing I want to say is that one of the things that I have learned over the years, being in this business for so long, being a human being who is very interested in personal development, improving, growing, evolving, changing, um, is that everybody sees the world through a different set of eyes. You know, we all wear a pair of glasses that are the lenses that we see through are based on all of our experiences. It's based on from our families of origin, from the places that we were born, from the things that happened to us, from the uh, um, the good things, the bad things, from, it's, it's our point of view, it's our perspective. It's very subjective. The way that we see the world is such a subjective experience. You know, it's, it's, Three people witness a car accident and you can get three very different interpretations of what happened based on the set of lenses that they're wearing. I mean, there's some obviously objective truths, but there's a whole lot of nuance in there. So I'm not going to pretend that the experience that I had was the same experience that other people have had. Overall, my experience with that film was genuinely positive. I feel incredibly honored that I got to originate the movie version of April O'Neil. That has been an incredible gift in my life. Now, it was absolutely a gift that I ran away from initially. Why did I run away from it? Because I did not continue with the films. And I did not continue with the films, not because I didn't want to continue with them, but they didn't want me to. You could call it, we, you could call it a lot of things, uh, choosing not to work with me, not picking up the option, whatever. The way that it feels is you got fired. And that was really rough. And so for a long time, I kind of turned my back on the whole the whole experience because that was really painful. It was not something that I wanted, but it was what happened. And it was extremely Gosh, all I can say is I have learned so much from that experience and I I don't know that I would change it. I don't, I, uh, you know, certain things I might like to have seen change. You know, it was a very challenging uh, experience for everybody involved. There were a lot of people who did not continue with it. Um, I think we, we were so blessed to have as our commander in chief, Steve Barron, whose vision was astonishing and the film that he created with the help of John Fenner who was our DP with Todd Langdon who was the writer with you know obviously the 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 Jenna, the story from um Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird um all of the Jim Henson the creature shop Brian Henson who was the second unit director Roy Forge Smith who was the production designer uh, um, the all the people involved from the actors you know to to the person who who drove the trucks you know the teamsters the PAs which are the production assistants which never get any credit for anything and they they literally hold up the world um every department Jeff Goodwin hair and makeup um uh you know there are so many people who worked so all the incredible stunt men um 
it takes an entire universe to make a film. It's not just the actors. It's not just the director. It's not just the script. It's not, you know, it is an entire company of people working tirelessly together. One of the things you have to know is this was a low budget independent film. <sighs> Corners get cut. There are things that happen in the course of shooting that may not be copacetic. Now, this person um, said that I incessantly complained. I am gonna have to take issue with that. Now, I definitely spoke up when I thought things were going off the rails. Uh, there may have been days when I was cranky and I full out did complain. And I don't know anybody who works on anything that's challenging and difficult, that doesn't have a day when they haven't had enough sleep, when they're really fucking tired, when shit is going sideways, and trust me, shit went sideways all the time, and they don't do a little bit of complaining. Definitely something that in my life I've worked on because I don't think that complaints are necessarily helpful. However, I also am somebody who does speak up when I see something that's not cool. When I see that people are being abused, when I see that things are not, when people are being taken advantage of. Somebody's got to say something. So in that way, I am very much like April O'Neil. It, <laughs> it was a no-brainer in casting for that one. The ways that April would poke Chief Stearns, I was known to poke people who were higher up than me because I just wanted this beautiful story to remain intact because it was so dimensional. It had this beautiful story of this father and his four sons and this crazy world that they lived in and the people who came into that universe. And those were the really mystical, magical parts of it. And when those were ever being threatened, I would say something. What I've learned is a woman in Hollywood, especially a young woman, I was only 25 at the time, zero power, zero authority, nobody really gets a, gives a shit what you have to say. When you speak up, you might get in trouble for it. Uh, I'm not saying that's the only reason that I was replaced, but I know that it was Probably one of them. Also, I really wasn't happy with some of the treatment that was happening on our set with the stuntmen. Um, and that I didn't understand was a cultural thing. You know, in China, they don't have stuntmen unions. They don't have workmen's compensation. They don't have remedies in place when somebody's injured. So when people would get injured on our film, if you were not an American, you would just pretty much be put on a plane and sent back to China. And that's how it happens there. And it's, it's you know, I may not think that's cool, but that's how it's done. And, um, you know, that was, hard to witness. Also, it was reported that I didn't want to do the films because I thought that they were violent or I didn't want to continue because it, it was violent, which I always thought, I got two minds about that one. One is, it's a martial arts movie. What? <laughs> it's a martial arts movie. Of course there's going to be fighting. It's armed to armed combat. Somebody dies in the end. I mean, I remember one time, I it was right after the film came out and a reporter asked me like how I felt about the excessive violence in the movie. And I, I remember literally like being confused and, and saying, I don't think I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. What, what excessive violence are you referring to? 
And they said, well, you know, children are leaving the theater and they're beating each other up and they're karate chopping the baby and they're, you know, they just told me all these things. And I was like, it's a martial arts movie. It's ninja. The word ninja is in the title and teenagers. And in my family, we, we played with each other pretty rough. I was the youngest of three. I have identical twin brothers. They pounded the shit out of each other and they pounded the shit out of me. And I had to learn how to fight. And, um, you know, nobody, nobody, it was all in playing. Uh, occasionally people would lose their tempers and somebody would get hurt, but you know, it was kids. And, um, I didn't get it. So that let's like, just put that one to rest. That's not what happened. Um, I will say without a doubt, I hold no grudges. I don't care. I'm part of this universe and, uh, and by universe, I mean the Ninja Turtle universe. And I am very honored and grateful to be part of it. And really the thing that turned it around for me was when I started meeting you guys, all of the millions around the globe. It is astonishing to me of fans who love this film, the other two that came afterwards, the cartoon, the comic books, the, uh, the cartoons that came after it, the new film, you know, some people, uh, the new um, Teenage Mutant Turtle Mayhem, people are loving that. Uh, I, I am really honored to be part of this universe that astonishingly, like, oh, it was 33 years ago. What? We are still talking about it. We are still loving it. And there are so many people who that little film and these little films and this universe brings a tremendous amount of joy to. And I have been at this for a long time. Uh, I have been blessed with a career where I have worked quite a bit and I've done a lot of different things. And this hat really just landed on the culture scape. I mean, it is just, it's just an honor. It's just a cool thing. And, but, but the thing that uh, drew me in was you guys. You wonderful people who share your stories with me. I mean, being an actor is a really fun business and a really hard one. The entertainment industry is tough. It really is. And you will get your ass kicked. <laughs> they will wipe the floor up with you sometimes. And you know, if you're there long enough, you know, Ned Beatty, who was in the film Deliverance, who was an amazing actor, um, and I think I've said this before on the channel, um, said, you know, last one standing wins. And it really is about resilience and grit. And if you can stay in, even when you've had your ass fired, even when, like, it has not gone the way that you wanted, if you stick with it and you have a good attitude, you know, it, it's this cool thing. And then I get to meet you guys. I get to hear your stories. There's always tears. A couple times every time I'm out there. And I know that attached to those tears is some profound story of that is very meaningful. That takes it from mere movie to something that gave you some sustenance generally at challenging parts of your lives or reminded you of somebody that you really love who um, who you used to watch the film with, maybe somebody that you've lost. Um, I think to me, one of the most profound stories is somebody who lived in a very violent household. And when that violence was going on, 
they would go and hide in a closet and they would pretend that I was holding their hand and they believed that they would be okay. And, you know, that's nuts. That, first of all, that a child should have to live through that. The second of all, that this film provided some comfort at a time when they really needed it. And so that is, that is an amazing thing. So anything that may have happened that prevented me from continuing with this beautiful set of films, I feel like it was absolutely meant to be. It was my opportunity in the first film to play April O'Neil. And then that mantle was, was given over to Paige Turco and it was her turn. And I'm actually really excited because I'm going to see her in Providence, Rhode Island in November and Renee Jacobs. There's going to be three Aprils all in one spot. And I'm excited about that because first of all, I love to share. It's not mine anyway. They all have, I mean, my gosh, Renee Jacobs was the very first April of all. And she created a, an amazing character. And while the film really kind of followed more of the comic book, at least the first one, than the cartoon, you know, I, I am... So excited to see her. I am so excited to see Paige. I'm so excited Kevin's going to be there. All of the voice actors from the cartoon are going to be there. Oh, I'm going to make Rob Paulson sing to me. Um, but it's, a, it's an honor to uh, be part of this. And I know that if I decided to hold grudges or if I decided... I don't know, the whole grudges, or to be angry, or to hang on to uh, what I perceive as an injustice from my perspective, talk to the other people, they're gonna have a whole different perspective on it, you know, that's how life works, um, then I would have missed out on this experience with you guys. And it was gonna follow me anyway. And I'm really honored to be here. I mean, the people that I have met, um, you guys, you're just so cool. You know how I feel. You know when you meet me, we know. We know. We know. And um, I have loved um, that I have gotten to meet some of you guys in person. Please, if I come to a Comic-Con near you, come say hi especially my Wake Up Wednesday people. I promise, Wake Up Wednesday, and Josh, I'm sure you've been on here. Josh, who is always, you're on there somewhere. Um, but yes, if I get Rob to sing to me, I will record it. Um, Rob Paulson. All of those guys, I, I was just with um, uh, uh, Oh, brain, brain, brain work. Coleman, um, what's his first name? It's because he's the man with two first names. Uh, oh my goodness, it's eluding me right now. Somebody put it in. Oh, I don't know. I hey, Josh, see, you're here. Um, but I can't, I love it when I get to meet everybody and we all get to chance to hang out. The, the green room, I would say, like. The green room at a Comic-Con is like Townsend Coleman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Townsend. I always, it's so funny. I, he's, to me, he's the man with two last names. Um, and Townsend is so great. And we actually just did a Comic-Con a couple months back and it was so much fun. I love when we all get to exchange stories from our, we have such different vantage points. Anyway, we are almost at 30 minutes long. I like to keep these short. I know everybody has a short attention span. Well, that's not actually true. I take that back. Everybody has busy lives and not a lot of time. Um, anyway, I love you. I 
I you I hope that um you understand that I I could mix it up a whole bunch and shit talk people and name names and blah blah blah. I find zero value in that. And I want to keep this space a space where we're all about love and positivity and that there's room for everyone and that we don't all have to agree. We could agree to disagree and still be friends anyway. And I think that if we all did that on the planet and we all stood for love and kindness and generosity and um, we shared that that would be just fucking beautiful. Excuse my French. Oh my gosh. I hope there are no kids listening. Like my dear friend, the may she rest in peace, Debbie Reynolds. I have a wicked potty mouth. I do. Ask Kimberly J. Brown, who I just spent the weekend with. When we were shooting Halloween Town, we had a jar and I had to put a lot of money in that jar. Now my kids swear like sailors. I love you guys. I'm going to be doing this more there's going to be some changes on my website. Uh, I don't know that it's going to be Wake Up Wednesday anymore. I think it's just going to be waking up. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I love you guys so much. Mwah. I'm going to turn this off now. I love you.